I'd like to bring the study session for uh, April 11th to order. <coughs> City Clerk. The record will reflect that Council Members Ridgeway and Nichols are absent. All right. Today is the, uh, the day which we're going to be having the uh, discussing the swimming pool issues, but before we get to that, I uh, go through the council and find out from the council if they have any items on the agenda that they would like to have clarified by the staff. Council Member Curry. I just have a, a minutes correction. We do that now or do it later on? Pardon? Later, later on? on okay, thank you. I have nothing. Mr. Selich. I have nothing, thank you. Councilmember Rosansky. If they can clarify the general plan for me, that would be great. <laughs> Other than that, I'll move on. Later on, oh, thank you. We'll handle that. Councilmember Daigle. Uh, yes, I had a question on item number four. It's a contract for a workers' compensation third party uh, administrative services. And I noticed in a, attachment B that there are four firms that bid less than the um, the service provider that staff is recommending we award this contract to? Yes, Lauren Farley, our public, I mean, our uh, risk manager, to come up and address that. Yes, member, uh, Mayor and members of the City Council, the bids that we received um, do have a uh, spread of them between about 300 and 82,000 roughly and it tops out at about 676,000 um, we in evaluating those bids we look at the qualifications of the claims adjusters the qualifications of the company that can provide those services in addition to their um, computer um, systems and those kinds of things so it isn't just a price driven uh, quote as you see here Okay, when I was re reviewing the staff report, it indicated that one of the reasons that you're recommending the current contractor is a comfortable working relationship with that contractor? That's correct. We've been with, the, um, with Hazel Ridge Risk Management Services for approximately 10 years. Uh, we've been lucky to have been able to formulate a partnership with the city of Costa Mesa um, for this dedicated unit. Otherwise, we couldn't, we couldn't touch the price on it and get the service we're getting. And we've also been additionally um, uh, lucky to have the same claims adjuster examiner for that same 10-year period, which is pretty unheard of in the industry. Thank you. So, Lauren, just to follow up on that one, one more comment. So this decision was not made just by city staff, but by Costa Mesa staff also? Correct. And we also had on our interview panel um, a workers' compensation claims manager from the city of Santa Ana, who uh, they do a self-administer program. They have an in-house program, so they're pretty well versed on the programs coming from third-party administrators, how to run a self-administered program, and the costs associated with both of those. Okay. Thank you. I have no questions myself. Anybody else have any other items? All right. Then the next item on our agenda is Mr. Kiff, I believe, is going to give us a presentation on the aquatics options for the Santa Ana Heights Regional Recreation Center. Mr. Kemp. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Um, there will actually be a number of folks uh, coming forward to the podium to, uh, to be a part of this presentation. And I know there are actually folks in the audience who wanted to spend some time with you talking about their ideas. And just as a reminder for the people in the audience and the people at home, on a study session like this, the Council doesn't take an action. Um, and it's more of an opportunity for a relatively extensive dialogue. There is always an opportunity for public comment. So um, at the conclusion of the discussion of this item by council members and Q&A, there's an opportunity for folks in the audience to come up and offer their opinion as well. One other thing, Mr. Uh, Kiff. Uh, we have a very long uh, closed session agenda item. And so that I would like to see if we can uh, conclude our, our comments and testimony by 5.30. That will give us almost a full hour and a half 
So great. Can we work towards okay. that, please? And the council members at your at your chairs, you have a packet of information. We're going to roll through that packet of information with you so you can follow along. And I'm going to get right into it here. If uh, Mr. Curry could help me with lights. This is what we're going to cover today. Um, a little bit of background on the Santa Ana Heights Community Center project, including some of the surveys that were completed before the design of the community center. There was a YMCA survey and there was a city survey. Then we're going to sh I'm going to show you again the facility design, which you've seen before, but it's a good thing to remind ourselves about. And note that there was pretty strong consensus on the type of the building, but why we're here is there was not strong consensus on the pool. Dave, can I ask a question at this um, stage? Uh, yes, Councilor okay. Dave. When you mentioned uh, there was consensus on um, the other aspects of the of the facility. It's my understanding that would be between the city administration, the PAC, and the YMCA? Yes. Okay. And that the project is now entering the phase of going through uh, City of Newport Beach public hearings? That's correct. We, uh, the traditional phase would be concept design, and that's in effect done, at least for the building. And then you go into design development which would involve more extensive dialogue. And while we bring in it, brought this project to you once before, council member, um, there's certainly an opportunity to revisit it at okay. this time in the process. And what might be helpful if you can give us some insights into this um, consensus process, it's my understanding that the Y, for example, they had an interest in the fitness center, but made it a splash park. Um, they had an indifference towards, if you could kind of um, lay out for us, please, what each of the various stakeholders um, were wanted in this process. Okay. And then, um, as, as noted, we'll go into the conceptual design drawings. Those were completed in November of 05. And then um, we're going to make sure everybody in, at council and the audience knows what are the existing aquatics programs. What does the YMCA do? What does the city do? And then the next part of the proposal, or the presentation, is the pool options. And you're going to hear from at least two different folks. Um, JZMK Architects is the group that designed the community center. And they've been asked to do um, four site plans that uh, look at types of pools that might fit within the existing concept design. And uh, they're not specialized uh, aquatic design folks, but um, they're, they're certainly able just like any, any architect would to put that down onto the, um, onto the schematic. So they've done that. And then following JZMK, uh, we at the city had asked uh, aquatic design group to come forward. They're actually folks who would then take those designs and refine them. So that, their specialty is pool design. They're going to talk about the things noticed, noted in the bullets. Then we'll go into a discussion in Q&A. As noted, there are some folks in the audience who wanted to make a brief presentation as well. If possible, it would be good to hold questions to the end because I think we're going to cover a lot and may answer some of your questions. But certainly, if you feel like chiming in, please do so. So quick background on the, on the Santa Ana Heights project. Remember, Santa Ana Heights is in a county redevelopment project area. And it's blighted by basically noise from John Wayne Airport. It has a project advisory committee, or PAC, that advises the Board of Supervisors on community interests. PAC had asked that redevelopment dollars be used to purchase and renovate or reconstruct the YMCA at 2300 University Avenue. They asked the county to do this. In 2003, the Board of Supervisors agreed to allocate $11.5 million for the project if the city would actually own and manage it as a regional recreational facility. And the city and the board have a written agreement to this effect, and that was approved by your council. Mr. Rosansky? I'm sorry to have to <laughs> ask a question, but can you just tell me how the PAC members are appointed, if you know? PAC members are appointed by the Board of Supervisors, and they um, uh, tend to have to be residents of, of the project area in which they reside, and they're mm -hmm. advisory to the Board of Supervisors. And on do they serve activities. for a certain period of time, or how does that work? Listen, uh, three, three years. years. Thank you. <laughs> but subject to reappointment. Okay. Cor correct. Thank you. There, 
as noted, there were two different surveys done. And then for, from 2004 and 2005, we spent most of that time designing the facility, not the pool side, but the building side. So Dave, gonna, can you just back up one, when, when you talked about the regional recreational center, can you um, comment on benefit within the context of redevelopment agencies? Does that benefit have to be exclusive to the project area or can it be more encompassing? Redevelopment law says that uh, any project constructed should benefit the project area but can have benefits outside of the project area as well. Just has to have some link to the project area. So the YMCA survey, this was, this was remember think about designing a building. We went out and the YMCA and the city both I went out and did a survey to see what, what should be in that building and, and the ground. So here's who was surveyed. It was January of 2004. I'm not going to go through all the survey results. They're in your packet. You note the importance of aquatics there, that um, residents responded reg to these types of aquatic uh, programs they'd like offered at the community center. There's also a city survey done. This was sent to um, 600 Santa Ana Heights residents and done in March 2004. This was assisted, uh, Cal State Long Beach did this for us. And you can see, again, there's a, a strong interest in additional swimming pool facilities and it runs down from picnic areas to uh, even a library, tennis courts, and then it's, it's in priority order there on the right. Were those categories selected by the group who did the survey or was that a fill-in kind of thing? They were selected by the surveyor. Thank you. This is the recreation program at Cal State Long Beach, so they had some familiarity with recreation surveys. And uh, continuing on down here, just type program needs. Again, those are in your packet. So the other was facilities and this one is programs. So getting into the design of the community center, as noted, there was strong agreement on the building design. And I'll talk a little bit to try to address Councilmember Daigle's thoughts. Um, we did indeed uh, sit down over several meetings based on these surveys. We sat down with a couple of members of the PAC, a couple members of the Y, uh, and the architect, and that's JZMK. And then the city staff was generally Marie and myself. Uh, Andrea McGuire sometimes, I think Matt Lohr joined us sometimes, and eventually we hammered out the building design fairly cooperatively, which you'll see in, see in the next couple of screens. There were differing opinions on the pools, and I wanted to try and summarize what those differing opinions were. Um, some of the Y members wanted a longer pool for lap swimming and club practice. Other Y members wanted to make sure the deep warm water therapeutic pool option stayed. And then Y staff have indicated to us that they, if a pool is too large, it kind of falls out of their fiscal picture and they would expect that um, the city might, should, should participate in the maintaining a pool that was that big. Again, continuing with the differing opinions, swim groups, swim clubs, masters groups, et cetera, would seek a longer pool for some long course training and flexibility to break the pool into sections and maybe have some regional meets. Um, city staff, it's been the staff's position that we'd like more pool time for lessons, water aerobics, and recreational facilities that are not involved in, for, for families, not involved in competitive programs. And then uh, just putting on our budget hat, uh, concerned about the cost of maintaining a larger pool, especially a meet pool. And then uh, as council member da members, members Daigle and Ridgeway have articulated, um, advocating for some combination that allowed for the maximum use of a pool, including some long course training, not necessarily meets nor water polo. And then uh, wanted to make sure to express what the, some of the PAC members have, have said to us. They believe that the smaller pool, at least the ones that have spoken to me, uh, with the recreational facility would better serve as a community gathering area, and that was kind of their vision for the facility and with a meat pool more concerned about the noise and traffic impacts involving a meat and the whistles of water polo. So, and that's similar to what the concerns of University Drive and Anniversary Track folks, some of whom participate in PAC. So this was the concept pl plan that came out of that discussion. You could see uh, the building itself there, uh, completely renovated from what it is today. 
and then a three aquatic facility option with a what is a 25 by 35 meter pool, a splash park element, and then a deep water or a warm water therapy pool. And this is Dave, the Dave, upper can story. You, can you go back to that? What, what's that area to the, the far right? What is that supposed to be? The area of the of light tan to the far right? Yes. That's a terrace function area, so you could have uh, picnics or gatherings out there. It's like hardscape, though? That's a hardscape area? I think it's an option. It could be hardscape or softscape. I think in this plan it was envisioned to be hardscape, some type of decking. It okay. isn't hardscape now, though. It's not now. It's earth now. Thank you. This is just the second story, just in case you wanted to come back to that. And um, as, as again, as Councilmember Daigle noted, this there's a the wise interest was to make sure that this facility had a fitness component. So there's the fitness gym right up there on the second story, along with um, ancillary facilities below it, including the gymnasium and the locker rooms. The community space side is kind of on the right. Um, you can see multi-purpose rooms with um, slider sliding walls that would retract and pull out depending on the size of the uh, room and thanks again to Mayor Webb for the pointer. Um, Dave is it correct that the PAC wanted some level of um, community rooms and then the city uh, staff said let's have more than that level I mean what is the how do we reach the amount of um, community uh, center rooms that uh, are in place now or proposed? I I don't remember a specific discussion about PAC wanting more or less community rooms. I think we went into it saying that there were certain types of programs that should be run in a neighborhood type uh, community center, uh, mostly the navigator classes that the PAC members would by nature want to participate in, and this tended to be the right space for that. Um, there's also some quieter rooms in their uh, library slash computer center so there's both the more active recreation and the more passive, just come down to the community center and read a book or read a paper. But I think we pretty much near the end gelled that this, this was the right amount of space for us. The, the basketball court there, where did, what was the impetus for that? Uh, the gymnasium there on the left is just an uh, increasing need in our community uh, citywide for, for closed-in gym space. Uh, that's a full court basketball? Full court, yeah. Right now, it's an outdoor court at the YMCA there. Thank you. So now we're going to roll into what types of aquatics programs are offered today. We do have folks from the Y here, so uh, they may come up and comment later. But I'm in the interest of time, I was going to roll through their programs. Um, they have two pools. They have a 25-yard by 14-yard rec pool with six lanes and an 11 yard by 10 yard therapeutic pool. You can see they offer swim lessons, lap swim, rec swim, aquatic water therapy, swim teams. They have a youth swim team, master swim, and one for Special Olympics. And then other programs that are offered at that facility are some limited water polo, um, junior lifeguard training, scuba classes. Their aquatic priorities, according to the Y, are swim lessons, then therapy, then lap swim, then rec swim, then swim team. And when they discussed their facility needs, they noted to us uh, they'd like to continue to serve the cl current clientele and be able to expand programming in the future. So a larger pool than they have now. You could see preferably 25 by 30 or 25 by 35 which would uh, more than double the size of the current pool from 6 to 12 to 14 lanes, and at least a warm water therapy pool to continue to serve the over 50% of their members who are age, of age 60. Uh, and that would be about 25% larger than the current warm water pool. Uh, one thing I might want to point out about the seniors that was brought to my attention by some seniors is that uh, some of them also use the, the larger pool and I know these days, I mean, some of our seniors are really fit. Uh, I was bicycling in Italy, and 60-year-olds were passing me all over the place. Sure, that's uh, very so. true. Um, both the fitness-type pool and the warm water pool will be used by those groups. I'm going to hand it over to Marie now, because Marie's most familiar with what the city's own current aquatics programs are. Thank you. 
Um, I just want to briefly roll through this, but a little bit of history um, on our rec programming in general and our philosophy and how we approach our rec programming um, is that several years ago through Sydney Ordinance, we were directed to directly cover 85% of the costs of providing most of our recreational programs and services, including our aquatics programs. Um, and to do that, w the philosophy that's been established then is that we look at surveying the masses, beginner to immediate level, intermediate level, and in the things that we do, um, sort of an all-play approach so that public recreation in Newport Beach is for the majority of the folks, and that's how we program, that's how we look at our facilities, our design. When we're coming up with new programs, we make it inclusive versus exclusive. We do offer special interest activities, though, and those are designed then to completely pay for themselves, and they're operated through classes like our contract class programs, where the user pays the fee, the entire fee or the cost for that service. Um, currently, as you may be aware, we don't own our own pool. We have several joint use agreements throughout the community for our programs. Yes, Leslie. Maria, I have a question for you. I know that currently um, your department has m more than 300,000 users of uh, rec programs. Um, you have some of the largest adult um, leagues in the county. Um, do you believe that your staff has the capability or could develop the capacity to run a 50 meter pool? Could we develop the capacity? Absolutely. There's always a potential to develop and to increase staff to do that. Um, it's just a matter of, I think, the direction that we get from the council as far as our philosophy. Is that a 50 meter competitive pool? Is it a 50 meter rec pool? Um, but certainly we have the capacity. We run programs at the pools that we have our joint use agreements with, so that's, that's not an issue. Yeah. Um, we have a joint use at the Marion Bergeson Aquatic Center. We offer swim lessons there in the summertime, recreational swim, which is open drop-in swim. Um, for families that want to bring their children for a day at the pool or an afternoon at the pool. Um, we do lifeguard training of our lifeguards there, uh, adult lap swim. We have a contract class water polo team as well as a contract competitive swim team. Um, and then we do rentals. We rent out to um, Sage Hills for some of their programs. Um, I've got a couple charts, as you'll see, during the summer versus the regular school season, our use of the Marion Bergeson Center um, differs quite dramatically. Obviously, during the summertime, we have a greater use because school is not in use, um, but the school takes up the morning hours, so our lap swimmers are not able to do morning lap swims, which is um, oftentimes what we find preferable. And during the school year, our use is much more restricted, and we're in Marion Bergeson mostly in the afternoons to the evenings and then some Saturday and Sunday use. In addition, we also have use at the um, Harbor High School pool, and that's summertime only. And we do, again, swim lessons. We focus on the rec programs, water aerobics, lap swim. Um, we also have an agreement at the Bayside Village pool where we do an arthritis aquatics program. And Newport Dunes, we've been working with them for many years in the Newport Beach Tennis Club to do our water aerobics and power workout. Um, our feeling is from a recreational aquatic needs in Newport Beach, one, we lack a facility that's designed to provide swim lessons. And what I mean by that is that it is much easier to teach, especially young children, to swim when you have a pool that has a zero depth entry or a shallow end. Um, so you don't have to have the children clinging to the side and holding on to the side of the pool um, while they're trying to learn how to swim. It's much, e much easier to teach the young ones when they can stand in the water. We don't have that ability currently. Um, we lack time to teach classes during the school year, obviously, because the two pools that we do work with um, have that majority of the use during the school year. Um, and we lack the opportunity for recreational swim. Um, most communities in Orange County that operate their own pools have an extensive rec swim program where families can just buy a summer pass or an annual pass. The kids can come for a two-hour, four-hour block, whatever is offered, and swim. In a large 50-meter deep pool, which is the two that we offer, there's not a huge comfort level on the part of parents to drop their child off to have fun in a pool that's above their children's head. Um, we would really look forward to having some place in town where we could offer that amenity. Um, a lot of folks say, well, we have the beach. We ha we're surrounded by water. Um, but if you ask a lot of parents, they would prefer that their kids are not learning to swim, one, in the ocean. That's a difficult place to teach children to swim. But it's also not as safe to just drop your kids off and have them supervised at the beach. There is no such program. Um, and we also need, we feel, more lap swimming times and lanes, especially weekday mornings and through the lunch hours. Um, we are constantly being, uh, receiving those requests from our lap swimmers. 
going to turn this back to Dave. Okay, as noted, the next part of the presentation is about some of the options for pools and pool sizes. And uh, the first uh, options are, are going to be shown by JZMK Architects and Don Jacobs is here. I'm going to let Don come up to the podium and Don, I'll move the computer for you. Thank you, Mayor Webb and Council Members. My name is Don Jacobs. I'm uh, principal with JZMK Partners and I'm also a resident of Corona Del Mar here in Newport Beach. So it's uh, great to be able to work on a project in our own backyard because we work all over the world. So this is great. <laughs> um, well, this is uh, the scheme that you saw uh, at first, which was uh, where we started. And let's, we have three schemes. We did the 50 uh, meter length with the um, leg off to the uh, lower right and then the splash pool off to the, to the left. Now for people who can't see that leg off to the right, then that's the third people? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Th that would have been a heated pool that, as opposed to the regular pool or the whole thing would have been heated? That, uh, my understanding, yes. It, um, the whole would have to be, the whole thing would have to be heated. Right, I think when we talk to your partner Bill Woodson. Bill Woodson, yes. His scheme and was that the area that would be sort of designated for warmer water, you know, either through accelerating the speed of the jets or whatever, that, that somehow that wa water would be warmer, that there. It could be. It okay. could be. That, that's what his thinking was. So, um, yeah, that, the next one is taking two. 25 uh, meter pools each and placing them about the only place they can be placed. And then the uh, therapeutic pool again on the right and splash pool staying on the left. And why would you have two separate pools? Pardon? Why would you have two separate pools? Uh, so you could have different programs uh, running at the same time. Is there different depths to the pools or something? or? They we'll, we'll get into those details in the next part because, um, yes, you're right, Councilman or Mayor Pro Tem, you could have different depths, you could have different temperatures, you could have different layouts. More variety, more flexibility. But and couldn't you have that same programming flexibility with the use of lane lines as well and bulkheads? In a 50-meter pool, you mean? Probably. Probably, probably, yes. And the, uh, the scheme three is the uh, full 50 meter pool. Oh, again, the therapeutic pool on the right, the splash pool on the left, all separated. Uh, probably the one that fits the space the best, which I think is becomes obvious when you look at it. Let me ask a question. Is the splash pool <coughs> designed to be to accommodate? Uh, Young children swimming lessons, as Marie indicated earlier, the need for a shallow pool for that. That's it. It can be that, Councilman, and also the, the actually the orientation of this splash park rather than a splash pool is that it's a zero depth entry. That you, similar to like a, the fountains at Fashion Island, it, where the kids would go and play in in sprinklers, etc. You may have some depth to, that's low into a pool, but the rest of it is more kind of fun things to do. While you're while you're above, you're actually on the ground. All right, but that really doesn't sound like a pool for swimming lessons. Yeah. No, okay, thank Correct. you. Correct. Um, and then with this scheme, it would seem as if you could ha establish a greater temperature variation between that pool there, which would be senior wa warm water, and then this pool here. Yes, you'd have much more control in in this situation. Okay, I, I think Don, thank you. That was, sure. that was good. Um, okay. I, that I, w I wanted to point out on this slide particularly, um, the, the pool width, if you, the pool length is 50 meters, the width is actually 20 meters. And that is, right. um, that's a, an issue in, in part because if, um, if you wanted to flip the lane lines and go in a different, go perpendicular to the long course, you wanted to have a short course, 
Typical short courses are 25 um, yards or 25 meters. So this is a little bit on the narrow side. That's not to say it wouldn't work. It obviously fits in the space. Uh, no, Dave, I think some of that may have been a miscommunication to the architect. It may have been. Um, so it would be possible then if we wanted to go to the 25 meters, as you're suggesting, there may be some benefit. Would there be adequate space to do that? Uh, fairly, yes, it could be done. Yes, it could be done. Okay. Did the uh, did the option that, that had the little leg out the bottom, was that 25 meter or 20 meter? That one. That, that was, was also a 20. 20 meter, yes. That's 20 meter, okay. Now in the 20, well in the 50 meter pools, would there be a shallow end here to where you could conduct swimming lessons normally? Again, that's a, that's a good question to ask the, the next uh, uh, person okay. that comes up, Randy. Uh, you can design a 50-meter pool with a shallow end. Uh, the traditional competition or meet pool that's 50 meters would not have a shallow end if you wanted to have regional or national meets. But you could certainly design a non-meet pool that was 50 meters that had long course training opportunities and had a shallower end. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. What we'd like to do now is, and, and Councilmember Daigle asked earlier kind of the process and where we had gotten to in this process once we had agreed on some design concepts would be um, to look at, as JZMK presented, what could possibly fit in this space, what are some of the concepts, but the next step would would have been to bring in a, a pool designer, an aquatic designer, to look at then what are some of the constraints, what are some of the requirements. Um, so we've asked Randy um, Mendioso to come and to talk to us today. He is with Aquatic Design Group, 25 years experience in the business. He has designed over, or participated in the design of over 2,000 aquatic facilities. Um, recent current projects in California include the Irvine William, William Willett Center, um, the 2004 Olympic Swim Trials Pool in Long Beach, um, the Ray and Joan Croc Salvation Army Aquatic Facility in San Diego, the City of Carlsbad's, com Carlsbad's Competitive and Rec Pools, Santa Clarita's Competitive and Rec Pools. So very extensive background in the design of pools. And what we've asked Randy to do is to look at this site. He's very familiar with this site. He actually did get a call from the architects about six months ago when we were at this point in this process to look at or to, you know, to um, hopefully be one of the folks to look at this next step and, and see, one, what fits and what makes sense from the perspective of the different needs of the community and the constraints of the site. So I'd like to introduce Randy and have him come on up and go through his program. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, City Council members, it's a pleasure for me to be here and uh, spend a few moments sharing some of the knowledge that we've gained over the years as um, principals of Aquatic Design Group. Um, I can take it from there. <laughs> uh, what I want to do is just basically outline the presentation for you <coughs> quickly, talk about some common competition pool sizes because that seems to be kind of the driving issue here as to what is appropriate for competitive and recreational use. Talk about what the capabilities by each pool size might be, the different events that you could host within those different size pools, the required infrastructure as far as number of toilet urinals, showers, those sorts of things, spectator, parking, those sorts of issues by pool size. Talk a little bit about the capital, you know, uh, initial capital cost to build each size pool and what, and what their operating cost might be by size. And then talk a little bit about balancing competition and recreation. And then finally, some cost recovery uh, figures, which I believe you have some, some uh, hard copies that have been handed out to you of an of a article that I authored recently in Aquatics International uh, magazine. So talking about the common sizes, typically most of the pools that we do, uh, starting at a high school level, are typically 25 yard by 25 meter and up. Uh, the YMCA facilities typically operate in the range of six to eight lanes by 25 yards because competition is not as big a factor in the YMCA facilities that we've done. The next step up would be 25 yard by 30 meter and the reason that the, many of the pools are getting larger, it used to be 80 to 90 percent of our high school facilities were 25 yard by 25 meter, but as water polo has gained in popularity, 
uh, to do a floating water polo course, which most hardcore water, pl water polo players are looking for, you need the additional length because you need at least 25 yards in all deep water, and then you need a transition in terms of depth to create what we call a regular swimming pool or a non-special purpose pool. If you have any portion of the pool, if, if it not, at least one portion of the pool is, is not three foot six of water depth, then it's considered a special purpose pool if it's deeper than three six. So some portion of the pool has to be three foot six in order to be considered for general recreation or public use, according to the California Building Code. Uh, 25 yard by 35 meter is becoming somewhat popular in that if you want to host, uh, again, water polo meets and then have a fairly substantial shallow end on your pool, three, uniform three foot six depth for teaching and training, this has become a more popular configuration in recent years. Again, most of it has to do with the, the, the requirement for water polo. And then finally, the, uh, the 25 yard, well, actually not finally, but 25 yard by 50 meter, which has been discussed. Um, there are two lengths that are basically swum in this country uh, in terms of competition. One would be 25 yards predominantly. There is a 25 meter short course season as well. But uh, the other one would be 50 meters. Um, I should point out, however, that, that high school, both high school and NC2A uh, meets are 25 yards. The, uh, NC2A national championships, for example, are all swum 25 yards. The primary reason for having a long course pool, in most cases, that, uh, that people have told us anyway, is that, is that you want to be able to train for long course meters. Um, many coaches are looking for uh, long course times to get scholarships, for example. If you want to get a scholarship to Cal or Stanford, those long course times are pretty important. So it is a quantum leap to go from 75 feet of swimming which the fastest people in the world do in about nine seconds to 164 feet, which they're doing in about 22 seconds uh, freestyle. And then because there is a, a requirement in most competitive pools for mostly deep water, we're seeing a lot of what we call stretch pools where there would be a bulkhead set at fit the 50 meter dimension and then we would accomplish a transition from that point to the shallower depth so that we can actually have recreation swimming going on in the same size, the same type of pool, um, rather than going to a two-pool complex. Um, and Randy, so, sorry. Some of the kind of the challenges um, that we're facing in our community, and I appreciate that staff had the usage of our pools, is that in these um, shared facilities with the school districts, you know, the water polo gets a lot of time. Right. So we have a lot of recreational needs, swim lessons, mm -hmm. you know, the long course training, lap swimming. So we're maybe thinking more of a venue where, you know, it can be more recreation. And then indeed, in terms of that three foot six inch depth, you know, something that small kids could also take less. Sure. So I think maybe given our community, um, in terms of this particular um, venue, we would probably be looking more at, at recreation kind of uses. Yeah, there, uh, generally anytime you're trying to do everything in one pool, there's always some compromise involved. And so what happens is, for example, we recommend against the use of starting platforms in water shallower than six foot six. Uh, the 2005 NC2A rule book recently came out with a recommendation for seven feet underneath any starting platform. So, so what that means is in the long course dimension, you can only put starting platforms at one end of the pool if you're using it for recreation swim. And that's why we've seen more and more two pool complexes, more and more stretch pools, so that we can have starting at both ends of the long course in deeper water to avoid any problems with, you know, spinal cord injuries and those sorts of things. So just, you know, as I say, a picture tells a thousand words, or speaks a thousand words. Um, to give you an idea of pool size, these are just some examples of different projects. 25 yard by 25 meter pool, again, most of what you need for a dual meet would be eight lanes of 25 yard swimming for any high school meet or even a small division two or three uh, college or community college meet. So that can be satisfied in a 25 yard by 25 meter pool. If you go to the next option, which would be a 25 yard by 30 meter pool, uh, you just get a little bit more area so that you can put, in this case, the image on the left shows fixed water polo cages. Those are attached to the wall of the swimming pool but you would have in this size pool the ability to host floating water polo. What that means is the, um, 
the goalie is on a level playing field. Uh, if you look at that image on the left, it's easy for the goalie to push off the pool wall to block a shot. Most of the other competitors would prefer that the goalie be treading water just like the rest of them. So that's why we're seeing more and more of these types of facilities. The next step up would be a 25 yard by 35 meter pool. And again, this gives you a fairly generous area. You can see the floating water polo cage set up there uh, in the middle of the pool. Um, in the image on the right, uh, you see the shallow end, and that just allows for a, more room to do the transition, the transition from, from de the deeper water to shallower water and give you a nice at least 10, 15, 20 foot uniform three and a half foot shallow end. 25 yard by 50 meter, and this is one you're probably familiar with just across town at, at the Woolwood Aquatic Center. Um, we actually did two 50 meter pools there. One go, this, this one is the main competition pool, which has a uniform depth of seven feet, and they do primarily swimming and water polo here. That gentleman on the left is uh, Michael Phelps, that was recently at the uh, duel in the pool between USA and Australia. There's also an, a multi-purpose pool on the other side of the bleacher seating that you see on the right uh, that incorporates a shallower depth, although it's not three foot six. It goes from approximately five feet to uh, 14 feet, and that's where they host the diving competitions. <laughs> and then finally, uh, an example of a stretch pool that uh, we did recently for UC Davis. Um, this one incorporates the use of two bulkheads. You can practice all three sports simultaneously. Well, not all three, but swimming, uh, diving, and water polo all at the same time. And by accomplishing these bulkhead moves, you can cordon off the, the deepest area for swimming in the image on the left, you can see the bulkhead, uh, the mov movable bulkhead, and, you know, just down the pool a little ways. And then um, you can also segregate water pole in the middle and swimming at the shallow end. Randy, could, could you explain movable bulkheads sure. and lane lines? What, what the movable bulkhead is, is it's basically a, a large either stainless steel or fiberglass structure that's anywhere from four to eight feet wide, and, and it has a bladder inside of it, an air bladder that you fill up with air. It's kind of like a submarine. You know, you fill your, the ballast tank, if you will, with air and it allows the, the bulkhead to float. And, and so it, you can actually push, move the bulkhead back and forth uh, along the length of the pool in this case and uh, to set different courses up, you know, for competitive swimming, water polo, and so on. And so um, we're seeing this a lot lately in, in these stretch style pools and they can be useful for, for example, for officiating during, during water polo meets and so on. In addition to a, a competitive application, could you also use the bulkhead, for example, to have uh, swim lessons in one half and synchronized swimming in the other half? Potentially. The, the only problem with the bulkhead is that the current state guidelines mandate that the pool be at least seven feet where the bulkhead is. And so what happens is, um, it necessarily has to be a deep pool because the, 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 health, the health code, the officials are concerned about people getting trapped underneath the bulkhead, and so they require at least three feet of water from the underside of the bulkhead to the pool floor. So you can't push the, pool, the bulkhead any shallow, in any shallower depth than seven feet, typically. Okay. Could you use a lane line as, a, as sort of an allocator of space? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. people do that all the time. In terms of competition, competition capabil capabilities, <laughs> I can't speak, uh, by pool size. Now, this is probably hard to read, but I believe you have a handout in your material that was prepared for you, which has a, a few notes and so on. But basically, what this chart illustrates is what you can do in each pool in terms of the competitive courses. And I won't spend a lot of time going over that. Basically, what you're seeing is, is your li the only limitation as far as swimming is concerned would be Obviously, you couldn't do the long course 50 meter uh, length in anything shorter than a 50 meter pool. Most of the other programs can be accommodated, depending on the type of water polo setup again, in a 25 yard by 25 meter to a 25 yard by 35 meter. The only thing that is limited, uh, as I said, is the long course swimming in any of the other configurations besides a 50 meter. Um, what we thought we'd do is, is just tell you what the required infrastructure might be for each pool size, go into a little bit more detail. On the 25 <laughs> yard by 25 meter, you've got a deck footprint of 115 by 127. Oops. 
you've got a, a bathhouse requirements basically now keep in mind that we already have an existing building on this project and so there would be some overlap in terms of, of you know there might be some shared uses some some uh, you know synergy between the the community center use and the, and the and the swimming pool use but if this were a standalone facility this is what it would represent in terms of a footprint of a, of a building that would need be needed to service the pool and approximately if you're talking competitive meets uh, typically you're going to have a spectator seating seating for three to four hundred folks perhaps in the 25 yard by 25 meter you'll need at least 88 cars for parking based upon the actual number of people that can fit within that pool that is exclusive of any competitive meets and then a site footprint of approximately 1.8 acres on the 25 yard by 30 meter pool we've got a deck footprint of 115 by 143 4 to 5,000 4,000 to 4,500 square feet of bathhouse spectator seating roughly 350 to 450 parking 105 cars site footprint of 2.1 acres again with with building parking uh, and bathhouse er, and, and pool excuse me on the 35 meter of deck footprint again we're assuming 20 feet of deck all the way around the perimeter which is desirable in most of our installations uh, most of the uh, programming that we do the coaches and competitors are looking for that um, a bathhouse footprint of 5 to 5,500 square feet, spectator seating of about 400, parking 122 cars, and a site overall footprint of 2.4 acres. On the 50, 115 by 209, it's a much larger footprint on the deck, a bathhouse of 7 to 7,500 square feet, a minimum of 500, and if you wanted a, a large competitive meet, you might have as many as 2,500 people at those meets. Uh, parking for 175 cars based upon the pool foot footprint, not the meat footprint, and a site footprint of 3.2 acres. Now, Randy, all of those would, or at least the seating, that would kind of be optional. Depending That's optional, on absolutely. Whether or not we want to have sure. a competition or not, you or bet. a recreation you pool. Bet. Thank you, bet. you. Absolutely. The initial capital costs, again, which do not include the site work, the pool decks, the deck, you know, the landscaping or buildings. In current, in today's dollars, this is no escalation, but based upon if you bid this project today, you know, April of 2006, for the 25 yard by 25 meter pool, you're talking an order of magnitude of 861,000. For the 30 meter, a million 29. 35 meter, a million 197. And the 50 meter, a million 722. For operating costs, and this is again basically uh, water, electricity, natural gas, and chemicals. This does not include labor, or maintenance, you know, capital funding, any of that sort of thing. This is just to operate the pool itself. 127,000. This is based on. These are fairly conservative figures. 15 cents a kilowatt hour for natural gas, and 85 cents a therm for natural. Excuse me. 15 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity, and 85 cents a therm for natural gas. Um, the 30 meter 152 741, 35 meter 177 678, and the 50 meter 255 607. Looks like that's a straight line. Uh, uh, the 50 meters just exactly twi twice as yeah. big as the 25 meters. It's all a function of water surface area. Okay. And so it's almost a straight line progression. So it's not so it's water surface as opposed to overall water volume. Like if you were to have less, a more shallow. The, the shallower pools will be less expensive to operate and maintain because there is a little bit of a factor with okay. respect to depth. Uh, the depth of the pool can make, make a difference, but in terms of the overall uh, heat loss, for example, about 80% of it is due to water surface area, and the remaining 20 has factors like the depth of the pool and you know other issues. <clears throat> Randy, it seemed like on the previous slide the construction cost yes, sir. also was straight line. Yes, okay. approximately $140 per square foot of water surface. I mean, there's no cost savings? But it, starts to, it starts to go down a little bit as you start getting into the bigger pool sizes, like the 65 meter. It starts dropping to the 120 a square foot. I mean, I think once you're digging a hole, it's not that much more expensive to dig a bigger hole, is it? <laughs> or maybe I'm, for, it I, is. I, I'm, I'm really considering reactivating my contractor's license because uh, I'm in the wrong business right uh, now. The yeah, pool contractors are. are making a lot of money. 
I, I wish it were otherwise, but you know, we, we bid about six or eight projects a month, and these are what the numbers are coming in at. And again, these are fairly conservative figures. Thank you. Uh, in terms of the site impact, what we did was we, um, and again, with, with deference to the architect, you know, we've had about a week's notice on this, and, and I'm, they've spent the last year or two on this project. So we were given a copy of the, of the, of the site plan that the architects had prepared. And what we did was we took a known dimension on the site plan, scaled a pool to that known dimension, and were able to insert them, which I will do right now. For example, that, is, that represents the footprint of a 25 yard by 25 meter pool on that particular site, on this existing site. And so we have room for potentially 15 feet on the north and south of, of pool decking, and obviously there's a lot of room left over. We tried to respect the area that is to the right beyond the, uh, the planted areas there, that tree line or vegetation line. Uh, it was our understanding that was being reserved, as was mentioned previously, for a, um, you know, like a function space uh, that was being operated by the YMCA. The next uh, configuration is the 25 by 30, and you see that the pool gets just a little bit bigger there. Again, the, the only concern that we would have in this configuration is, is, the, um, is the, north, the decking on the north and south sides of the pool. It's getting a little bit tight. It's not the 20 feet that we'd like to see. And, and, and again, believe me, I don't want to step on any toes. As far as the architect is concerned, I wouldn't suggest that they move their building north or south on the page. But, but that seems to be the only way that that could happen is to get, to get the adequate number of, uh, uh, of feet of decking around the perimeter, assuming that 20 feet is what's desired. But Randy, would that be true even if it wasn't a competitive pool? Yes, that's true. Yeah. If, if, we, if we're dealing with the 25-yard dimension, yeah, that's, that's correct. The 35-meter pool, again, just gets a little bit bigger. Um, you know, you see it's starting to get a little bit tight on the southwest corner there um, on the 35-meter, but I think it's still workable, potentially. But where we have a little bit of concern, obviously, is in this next scheme with the long course pool, um, where the, the corner of the pool is right on the curb at University Drive in this scheme. And this is, I think, because it's, we're using a dimension of 25 <laughs> yards versus 20 meters, which was done previously in some of the schemes that were yeah. developed by the architects. And if you weren't respecting the, uh, the function area, that could be moved in the other Yes, sir. Absolutely. Do you have a problem uh, with pools that are constructed in filled areas where part of the pool is in a cut area and parts of the fill area? Um, no, it just takes additional money. Uh, okay. it's, it's all a function of, of, of the dollars, really. Because we've, we've, we've built pools in some very interesting soils conditions. in groundwater, run, rivers running through them. I mean, it's, it just takes more money to build. Ideally, you want, you know, 2,000 pounds per square foot of compaction and no fill. And, you know, that's, that's what your standard pool price is based upon. But we're doing a project at San Diego State right now where we've got 60 feet of fill. And, and the entire pool is on caissons and, and friction piles. So it just costs more money. You can build it. Just to let you know, today is an information forum, so you will have may have more time sure. to work things out. Um, in terms of, you know, the next issue was, you know, balancing the competitive versus the recreational use that we wanted to talk about is, you know, in many cases deep water is preferred for competitive uses, and I think that's been addressed previously. But And but, when you, you say know, deep water, that's the six and a half to seven six feet? Six and a half to seven feet, yeah. It's typically uh, what we recommend underneath any starting platform. The water polo standards are seven, six and a half feet going to seven. Um, and so, so to, to over the, the entire water polo course, which is the biggest user of deep water, uh, that entire course has to be um, seven feet is what we recommend. So there is a conflict, there can be a conflict between the competitive and recreational uses if you're trying to do everything in one pool. Um, you know, there is a differential water temperature is my understanding and looking again and this has been mentioned previously at the, at the YMCA users that of the 2,000 members they have, close to 50% of them are, are 65 and older. And so in our experience, those users, although I will, I will um, acknowledge the point that there are a lot of more fit people here in Newport Beach, I would say, uh, perhaps more so than in Carlsbad, but uh, 
but basically what we're what we're looking at the competitive and lap and fitness swimmers are looking for a temperature in the range of 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit if it gets much warmer than that they start to heat up it's tough, tough to do a good workout uh, whereas the recreation swimmers uh, seniors folks are looking for a range of 84 to 88 and we've done a number of senior facilities where they're complaining about 88 they wanted at 90 92 so so it just depends on the user group. Sounds like my kind of water, 92. <laughs> um, infrastructure required, and again, I think we've covered this issue, but you know, for large competitive meets, if you build it, they will come. This has been our experience, and so that's, you know, uh, the sweet spot for NC2A meets is about 2,500 folks. I think at uh, the Duel in the Pool, we had close to 5,000 at Woolett Center this past summer. Um, so. If you want to host competitive meets, you know, there, there are some infrastructure requirements associated with that. Yeah, but a 20-foot wide deck doesn't allow many spectators. No. And, and, and really, if you're hosting these large meets, you really want to have a buffer between the spectators and the athletes and the officials on the deck. So um, there's those other issues to take into consideration. And there is, there is a, a, a difference in the cost recovery in terms of, you know, Marie mentioned earlier, you know, the goal of the city was 85% cost recovery. There can be a substantial difference in the cost recovery between primarily competitive facilities and those that balance competition and recreation. And I'll just cover that just briefly right now. We did a study recently. I believe you have a copy of the article uh, that I authored in uh, Aquatics International where we looked at uh, a bunch of different facility types from competition only indoor competition only outdoor now obviously the indoor facilities don't really play a role here in this case but it was just part of the study uh, a combination of competition and recreation where there's at least a 50 50 split between competition and recreation meaning when i say competition i think primarily of rectilinear type pools and recreation having things like zero depth entries water slides uh, wet play elements those sorts of things so we looked at both indoor and outdoor facilities for that combination of competition and recreation. So the, this would be an example, for example, of an outdoor combined facility, if you will. And then also rec only indoor, where there's no competitive uses per se, and rec only outdoor. Uh, this is a facility we, said for, we did for the city of Denton, Texas, which has no rectilinear pools whatsoever. And so when we when we did our survey, and I believe you have a, a copy of a, a blank survey form, we just asked these particular groups, there were 24 different facilities that were surveyed, but we, we said, we asked them to fill out this information, and it's difficult getting this information, frankly. Uh, the, the challenge that we have is sometimes in different cities, the, the revenues are kept by one department, and the operational expenses are kept by another, so we're really asking them to do us a favor. We asked them to fill out their revenue, Categories and we tried to break it down to make it easy on them, if you will, and the expense categories, so things like labor and benefits and those sorts of things. And so after compiling all the results of the survey, what we found that is that on the average, if you're talking a competition-only facility, meaning no recreational components whatsoever, you're averaging between 50 and 60 percent cost recovery on, on those competitive-only facilities. When you combine competition and recreation, where you've got about a 50-50 split in, in terms of water surface area, for example, or slide attractions or something, you're looking somewhere in the range of 70 to 80 percent, depending on the ratio. And, and again, this is a broad generalization, but um, if we're talking recreation only, uh, we have many facilities that we're operating at break even and then some. Um, so the, so the best way to meet that goal of 85% cost recovery that was stated earlier is to, is to try and balance the competitive and, and the recreational uh, needs within the, within the facility um, if cost recovery is part of the equation right. um, and, and if that's a high priority. We, we do a lot of facilities um, that incorporate, like William Woolett Aquatic Center, for example, that incorporate um, strictly rectilinear pools. Uh, most of our parks and rec recreation facilities these days tend to have a balance of both competitive and recreational use. Um, I did re review your survey in detail, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I noticed is that the 
revenue generating model that it used was day passes, and right. the YMCA is a revenue generating model of monthly membership, right. and that some of the, you know, for example, the Splash Park, they wouldn't be as interested in because it doesn't sure. promote skills development. Yeah. So I, I think that would probably be helpful that we know that as well. Oh, it's I understand. Really a mix of and and again, this generation. is a fairly generic study. What we were trying to do is look at why there's this disparity. There seems to be this disparity between primarily competitive only facilities and those that incorporate more recreation. Okay, and so with I, that. I think that we're kind of running out that, of that uh, time to uh, get much input from the audience, but uh, we have a half an hour left. Uh, yeah. I think that there was a couple of gentlemen that, uh, Leslie, you wanted to have speak. Uh, uh, I think they requested some time. Um, one is uh, Ron Bears, who's a master swimmer. Is Ron here? Okay. And then the other is the um, swim coach at the YMCA who has an active program there. Okay. Now we have about 25 minutes so that if we give each one of them 10 minutes, that means we've got five minutes for audience testimony. So I think I, I'd like to see them cut down a little bit, uh, see if you can, I, I can go make through this it pretty very, fast. I can make this very brief. Um, I've been swimming in Newport Beach pools for uh, just about 20 years. Oh, my name is Ron Bears. I live in Balboa. I'm an architect and master swimmer. Um, master swimming is a very informal sport. It's impossible to organize. It's a bunch of radical people who do whatever they want to do and you know make up their own rules. Um, we have a, a you know an ocean here, so master swimming because we have the ocean, is very popular. Another thing about master swimming is that if you <laughs> participate in sports which are more impacting on the body, like running or things like that, uh, the body starts to wear out, you know, some point, 40, 50 years old, you find people going into less impact sports. That's why master swimming takes a big jump uh, when you look at the uh, demographics of the population. The older the population, the more participants are going to be looking for those opportunities. Um, my whole um, pitch is that um, uh, I was a recreational planner in Hawaii for 20 years. Um, Hawaii had no pools until the mayor said, um, you know, we need to have an aquatics master plan. And, he's, and it was a very simple master plan. He said every community should have a pool, period. And that's the master plan. It took uh, 20 years to do. Uh, now every community has a pool. It balances. They don't. They don't lean towards competition. They don't lean towards recreation. They compromise and meet all of the user groups that they can. Um, the uh, other thing I wanted to just bring up is that, uh, as was mentioned, we have two joint use facilities: uh, Marion Bergeson and Newport Harbor. Uh, joint use means cooperation between the school district and the city. Uh, I have been personally involved in trying to get the locker rooms open at Corona Del Mar for over 10 years, and I have given up. It's not possible. Um, joint use means that you have to have these two entities dealing with each other. It also means that if you look at joint use, what does the school need, what does the city need, I think there's a lot of opportunity in looking at all existing facilities to increase and enhance the usability of what we have. Um, we have very poor swimming hours at both of those facilities. Well, Newport Harbor, you know, you have to climb over the fence at 5 o'clock in the morning. But uh, other, you know, uh, Corona Del Mar, it's, it's weekend and after 6, basically. Uh, the other factor, this is my last point. Um, when you look at demand and need and the type of facility, it's not just the accommodation of all these people, it's the quality of the experience that you're going to provide. I mean, you can, you can build the most wonderful facility in the world and overload it and everyone loses. It's, it's a, it just becomes a very, uh, you know, unsatisfactory situation. Those are my main points. and. Uh, Thank you for your time. Should we have a 25-meter pool or a 50-meter pool? In my mind, there's really no question. If you know, if you look at the future, 
which is difficult to project, uh, the 50 meter pool gives the maximum flexibility. And now, you know, the depth issues and all the other design issues, I think, well, I just, I personally have, uh, um, you know, experienced swimming primarily in 50 meter pools and their flexibility is just, uh, you know, so much, so much better than something shorter. Approximately uh, how many master swimmers do you think there are in Newport Beach? Um, I couldn't even make a guess. Uh, the, the, you know, Saturday. Five, ten, 150, oh, a thousand. Hundreds. And the other factor is, is a, you know, this is a regional sport, so people, okay. you know, don't stay in their community. They travel around. And, you know, the summer we have ocean swim races just about every weekend, and people travel all up and down the coast. The same thing happens with people in a master's program just for practice. You know, they drive to where the group is working out or where the group could give space. So that, um, you know, the numbers, I think there's, there's three informal groups working out at Corona Del Mar. Um, and uh, if they're all there at the same time, along with swim lessons and water polo, you know, that's, that's uh, uh, circle swimming in lanes with three to, three to four people. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have one question, and that is the harbor pool, is that a shallow end, deep end pool? In other words, three and a half, four feet on one Newport. end, or is that a deep, deep pool? I think Newport Harbor has graduated. You can say it again? I think Newport Harbor is graduated. It's not a constant. So standard. it starts out on one end, the shallow end, yeah. at three and a half or so. Right. And and what about Corona Del Mar? Corona, Corona Del Mar is the same thing. It's uh, It has a very, I guess, unique configuration because uh, it's got a it's got a ledge in the deep end so that you, you're you not hanging on to the gutter. You're standing on a ledge in the shallow end. Uh, uh, is configured so that there's, uh, you know, somewhat of a graduated depth, but uh, you know, it's a good almost half the pool for uh, for lessons and recreational swimming and lap swimming. It, you know, they all work in that depth. Okay, thank you. Uh, had Mr. Blue wanted to give something. Mayor, members, city council, staff, my name is Craig Bluell. I'm head coach of the YMCA of Orange County swimming team, which has three youth swimming teams at three different branches. I'm also master swimming coach at the YMCA. Um, try to cut a lot of this out for you so we can hear the, have the parents speak. Uh, had 32 years of public service experience, uh, 25 years in planning, 24 of which were the city of Newport Beach, five years with the Revenue Division of the City of Newport Beach. Prior to that, my planning career, I worked for three years for the Riverside Planning Department. During that same period of time, I coached swimming for the Riverside Swim Club and um, was very fortunate to have one little girl that I coached make it to two-time Olympian. Uh, during my high school uh, days and college days, I was a swimmer. I have a degree in economics and I have a minor in community recreation. I thank you for this opportunity to come and speak to you about the pool needs in the City of Newport Beach. Uh, as the parents started coming to me as they were going through the process, the hearing process, uh, they were looking at drawings and saying, why can't we just extend this 25 meter pool to a 50 meter pool? There was no desire on their part to exclude anybody or any group of, of swimmers at the YMCA and there was absolutely no intention on their part to have a competition pool. I hope that um, makes you feel better and rest at ease. There was never any intention to have a competition pool at all. Um, swimming meets are a programming decision. Swimming meets are secured through bids. Parents groups usually take responsibility for those swimming meets. They take financial responsibility, liabilities. There is no parents group at the YMCA. Um, again, um, conducting meets, if there is a concern on the part of the city, that, that could be handled through the uh, operating agreement. Uh, what does a 50 meter pool offer? Well, when the Board of Supervisors approved funding for this project, was their understanding and intent that the facility has some sort of a regional draw to it. The YMCA's current operation is consistent with that. YMCA members come from Newport Beach, Costa Mesa, Huntington Beach, Westminster, Fountain Valley, Santa Ana, Tusta, and Irvine, just to name a few cities. I understand that some people uh, come as far as Garden Grove to participate at the YMCA. That's quite a service area, and it's quite a population. 
Uh, we've had to think about future growth uh, along the county corridor where we see quite a bit of development in terms of large lots being redeveloped with uh, single family homes and condominiums, many, many new units. The 25 meter pool provides one and one third basketball courts in size in terms of water space. So when you put in a 25 meter pool, the dimension works out to about one and a third basketball courts. And that's pretty small amount of water for a air service area that large. A 50 meter pool would provide more water space, be more inclusive and more encompassing. In the Newport Mesa area, there is only one municipal pool. That is a municipal pool in the city of Costa Mesa at the downtown recreation center. That is a four lane by 25 yard swimming pool. That is smaller than a basketball court. We use that uh, pool facility this uh, winter at Christmas time to practice because our, our pool was being clean. That is the entire municipal water space in the Newport Mesa area. There is, of course, there are private pools and there is some shared agreement. Um, that's why there is such a big demand for public water space, particularly locally. We read articles in the newspaper about people who are swimming until 10 o'clock at night. As was discussed, there were a number of surveys, and I'm not going to go through that. You can read it, but it was clear that um, water, aquatics, and swimming were the top priority in those surveys. Uh, there was a town hall workshop conducted about one year ago. At that time, the parents in the, on the swim team and, and some of the lap swimmers went to that meeting, and two out of the three working groups at that workshop uh, were requested specifically a larger pool at the dimension of 50 meters. Surveys prior to that did not ask for anything in terms of specific size. It was very general in nature. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the swim team at uh, uh, the local YMCA here, the Newport Beach YMCA. Uh, we hit a high with very little promotion of about 90 swimmers. I think it was 89 to be exact. Um, at the year-end banquet, we had 75 swimmers that we considered to swam through the entire season, one-year season. Of that, only 33 were performance swimmers, only 33. Less than half were performance swimmers. The majority of the kids in that program are recreation fitness swimmers. I can't tell you how much and how important it is for the youth of our communities to have swimming. Their thumbs are the most skilled parts of their bodies. They're not very well fit. I can uh, attest to that. It takes a lot of work, about a year, to bring a uh, swimmer into good fitness, and we've had wonderful examples of this. Do you mean thumbs from video games? What do you mean? Yes. Highly skilled thumbs from playing their video games. About how much longer do you need to have, Craig? Pardon? About how much longer do you need to have? Uh, just a couple minutes. Okay, uh, one of the minutes. things that I'd like to also point out as master swim coach, I have swimmers that range in age from 24 <coughs> to 70 years old. Uh, in fact, the 70-year-old beats some of the 40-year-olds. I also um, want to stress the fact that the importance of having a warm water pool for seniors it is a very important consideration to this site. The senior warm water pool is very important. The 50 meter pool does not limit aquatic recreation in any way. It creates more pool space and it creates greater avail availability of water. Um, a large portion of the time the lanes will be 25 <coughs> yards in direction, but this month, April 22nd, the long course season starts. Some of the swimmers that we will be sending to long course meets have not swum in a 50 meter pool yet. And as attested to by Randy, it's a shock. It really is. The swimming style is different. They need to be training in a 50 meter pool to successfully swim in that kind of a, uh, a competition. Um, there is great value to open water swimmers uh, because Swimming every, turning every 25 yards is, is, makes swimming very simple because most of it's a glide on a push off. Um, the other advantage of swimming in a 50 meter pool is when you go and swim in a 25 meter pool, boy, it's like a puddle, okay? And you get much, much better performances. So I don't think there's anybody here who'll dispute the value of recreation, I mean, recreational swimming or even performance swimming. So I, I urge the city council to, to consider the, the 50 meter pool very seriously. And I think it would provide the, for the future needs of the community. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any, any questions of the council? Okay. Uh, I'd like to now open this up to uh, the, uh, somebody from the Santa Ana Heights uh, PAC. 
I'm Barbara Venezia. I'm chairman of the Santa Ana Heights Redevelopment Agency yeah, Project I'm, Advisory Barbara, Committee. Barbara, how, how long do you need to have? I need to have just a few minutes. Okay, five minutes. In 2000, the PAC was first introduced to the concept of a community center project, and I led this charge. Along with a few other PAC members, the first property we found was the Cole property down on Cypress Street. The original scope of this project was to include one community room, a small pool, a tennis court, a large outside green belt with play equipment for children, and stables for horses. The Cole property was for sale for $3.5 million. We could not get the city or the county to get behind that project for several different reasons. One was the big question was who would run it and who would maintain it. The redevelopment agency cannot maintain and could not run it. And the city wanted no part of that. So we needed to find another facility and we needed to answer those questions. And the other thing that was the big question was the facility had to operate in the black. So in 2003, the YMCA came into the picture. They were selling the property. They were, the city was looking at it to build low-cost housing. The community didn't want that. So we figured this is a win-win situation. We could keep the programs that the Y currently offered, increase the community rooms, because according to the surveys, you see, people wanted the community rooms. And the community also wanted to keep the programs that the Y currently had. The city would run the facility, would own the facility, and we'd enter into an agreement with the Y. Now, the most important part of that agreement would be that the facility would operate in the black. In all the surveys that were done, there was no talk of a 50-meter pool. In fact, this is the third conversation we've had about this, and it has been explained time and time again. The PAC, the surrounding community, the architects, and the city staff all support the 25 by 25 or 25 by 30 meter pool. There's several different reasons that this doesn't work. 50 meter pool physically does not fit into the space of the current plan. We've already spent $70,000 with the architects and this plan has been presented to the surrounding community who all bought off on that. The homes that are directly behind the Y do not want the noise, the traffic that the larger pool brings. And let's not forget, this isn't an aquatic center. This is a community center. Parking is a very big issue here. And as you heard, with the bigger pool, we have parking issues. There are strong questions if geologically it would even be feasible, and if so, to build a larger pool, what would the cost be and who supports that cost? The building square footage may have to decrease, losing community room space, workout space, all which the community strongly wants. The longer this process is delayed, the higher the cost of the facility, and everybody agrees with this. It started out at 11.5, then it went to 14 million, then the PAC in June approved going up to 18 million dollars. The current plan you saw are being tossed around at 25 million and up. The redevelopment agency has many projects, $30 million of projects on the table. There is no more money for this, and at $25 million, the PAC will not support it, and neither will the local community. The financial plan for the center also changes drastically if you take that smaller pool out of the picture. We've got three pools in, in diagram number one that Dave showed you. That's the financial plan that we were working for. If this be creates a deficit now with the bigger pool, who picks up that extra two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year? Redevelopment money can't do it. So that means that it's up to the citizens of the city of Newport Beach to keep putting money into a project that number one was paid for by redevelopment money, number two had a plan that operated it in the black and now it operates in the red. It would be fiscally irresponsible to do this. The warm water seniors programs, they go away and let's face it. The outdoor water facility for small children is most likely to be deleted too, and the whole focus of creating a multi-use facility for the broadest aspect of this community now changes to a single-use aquatic facility. And at this point, we need to ask ourselves, is this really the community concept that we want to bring forward? And we think not. At the April PAC meeting, which was last week, the PAC voted, and we are going to reevaluate this project, depending on how you vote and how you move forward with it. It's not an aquatic facility. If you need an aquatic facility, then the proper thing to do 
is to go and find the land and build a proper aquatic facility, not build it on the back of these residents and not use redevelopment agency dollars to do it. So the PAC will reevaluate this program. And there is very little, little support by the tons of emails that I am getting as the PAC chairman to continue at $18 million. So it may be that we need to find something else for this facility. We may need to just scrap this facility and find another community center facility that actually meets the needs of this redevelopment agency community because this is spiraling out of control. Thank you. Okay, is there any other group that is represented here that, uh, what, what groups are they back here? Okay, who else over there? So you're representing the seniors group, and do you represent any particular group? West Santa Ana Heights. Anybody else have a group? Is there a Dave Salo here? Dave. Oh. Okay. Uh, we're, in order to get yeah, as many different quick. groups, uh, could we have three minutes on this, yeah, please? It'll be quick. Uh, my name is Robert Hanley. I've lived in West Santa Heights over 30 years. Uh, I feel at the point right now that we're being made a football of, a political issue uh, by the individual that just spoke to you. She has aspirations of taking her job. I'll do my best to see that that doesn't happen. Can we limit this to the discussion of the I'm, I'm saying that, swimming pool issue, that uh, we are not being represented. A statement was made that the community uh, was being representative. We have never been represented by a PAC group. Although our monies are in the PAC effort, I can guarantee you if it's put to a vote, which it will be, they'll lose. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we have the YMCA representative, please? Thank you, Mayor. City Council members, uh, my name is Art Wandlin. I'm the uh, CEO and President of the YMCA of Orange County. Uh, my background briefly is uh, 35 years uh, as a professional with the YMCA have operated and been part of uh, operations of facilities uh, ranging from 100,000 square feet to uh, 20,000 square feet with and without uh, aquatics facilities. We entered into this project, you've heard the history and uh, do not want to uh, repeat all of that, but uh, we are looking at this and approaching this as a comprehensive uh, plan and each segment of the site that you saw really needs to operate together to, to make the whole work. Today we've been focused on the aquatics piece of it, but it is going to have a, a tremendous impact on the uh, on the facility piece. One of the, as the pool increases, so does the uh, need for lockers and showers. The current building design uh, for the showers is for a smaller pool. If we put in the larger, that's going to impact that. Our position has been we will support whatever the county, or pardon me, whatever the community uh, would like to have in whatever the surveys uh, uh, say that uh, that we should do. The concern we have over the 50 meter pool is strictly a cost, strictly operating costs, is that the model and the financial model that we have would not support the operating costs for a 50 meter pool. So we would need to have, we would need to have support there. The uh, the other piece is the planning time. Uh, this, this project has been under plan for over three years and the cost escalation keeps going up. And so we would like to see a decision to, uh, to move forward so that we can get the, uh, get the project up and going. Finally, the business model, as was pointed out, we entered into this with the agreement that if we operated this facility that there would not be a cost to the city. And in order to do that, we needed to have the fitness facility, the fitness piece to generate the revenue to offset the other pieces, the gymnasium, the community rooms, and the pools we looked at we, there would be a level of cost recovery that we built into that operating cost. And so the, the piece that we see as we get more aquatics facilities, their higher cost recovery, which we would need to have, uh, have some support in that, in that particular area. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we had somebody that was said they were representing the seniors group.
I guess we have two seniors groups. Two seniors groups. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the City Council, I'm Shirley Conger, and I live in Corona Del Mar, and I've been going to the Y uh, since 1971 regularly, and I swim several times a week in the lap pool. By the way, um, many of the seniors swim laps as well as using the um, a small deep pool. And I think there's room for both. But one thing I do want to say that um, is that the population, the crowding at the Y has gone up steadily through the years. And now, um, on, on peak times, when people go and swim before work or come right after work and swim, it's too crowded. For example, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings, there are, um, there are six lanes, and three of them are for masters, and three for the regular lap swimmers. And it's too crowded. It's, it doesn't um, accommodate all of the people. If we had a 50-meter pool, we would have 14 lanes rather than six, which would accommodate both groups. And I think there's room not only for the lap, for the 50-meter pool, but also for the deep water pool where, which is an exercise pool and it is in use now. Um, I think this uh, whole project will be a wonderful addition to community services in, um, in Newport Beach and it will improve the quality of life. I'm all for it. Thank you. Okay, can we have the other representative of the Council members, my name is Kathy Anderson. I'm a native of Costa Mesa, and so my concern is, as was expressed, that if we build it, they will come, which we all know is longtime residents. We build it, and they come. And so, what I've heard about the competitive um, pool in Randy's presentation. Of course, our existing membership, the YMCA, would be extremely concerned for that. I really appreciate that it was spoken up that this is primarily a recreational facility and that uh, swim lessons is a priority and then the um, therapeutic. Um, but w the reason I um, wanted to get up and speak was just to express a real concern on behalf of the seniors, which is the group that I swim with in the deep water workout pool, in that there, if, if that pool were not in existence, um, there would be something of 180 members that would um, most likely give up their membership. And at present, that, uh, that's just 90 percent of the folks that go through there. And that would generate, you know, 97,000 a year, which isn't a huge cost. But if we, you know, just have a 25 by 25 pool at 127, you know, our present membership really does contribute to the up care and keeping of the pool. And so I just, the reason I want to stand up and just speak on behalf of the seniors, I really appreciate your respect for them and your concern for them and just to stand up, um, you know, to that they be a priority, a really priority in this situation. And um, so thank you. Thank you. How many people in the audience would like to talk on this issue? I'm just going to want to get a rough idea. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, I'm thinking I'd like to get the opinion of the council. That's going to put us at three minutes apiece, well into six o'clock. Uh, should we schedule another uh, a study session on this to where we can uh, get into this in more detail? Um, I would rather, I think, some of these folks, you know, they have other activities in their lives now that they're here, if we could uh, have them continue, and I know many of them want to be able to speak, that would be my preference. You could limit it. I mean, it doesn't have to be three minutes either. You could limit it to one or, or two. What's the, mo what's the mood of the council? We do have uh, this a closed session that has uh, a, a very significant 
Anybody I'd else? like to hear him speak. I think maybe give him okay. two minutes each. All right, we'll do two minutes. Uh, Councilmember Daigle would like, is there a Dave J. Lo? Said correctly. Okay. Who would like to, those people that would like to speak, please move down forward so that uh, we don't have a, a minute in between speakers. <laughs> so we can get as many as possible in the next half hour. And I am going to cut it off at about two minutes to six. Yes, hello. I'm speaking on behalf of, of Rick Dayton. He's very sorry he couldn't be here, and he thanks you very much. Um, and what is your name? My name is Charlie Gambetta. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Charlie. Uh, I have been involved with this project as a member of PAC since the fall of 2002. PAC was able to sp persuade the county to spend $30,000 for an independent feasibility study by Rosenau and Spivak Group. That feasibility study used as a model and phased remodel addition project to the existing buildings and facilities. Included in the scope of the work was a rehabilitation of the existing two pools and pool deck. RSG gave an analysis of construction cost and income stream that showed a renovated and enlarged YMCA building with renovated pools and new gymnasium fitness areas, locker rooms and community spaces, which could be built for seven and a half million dollars. Furthermore, after studying the YMCA pro forma, RSG concluded that the working model of a community, a community center fitness facility run by the YMCA could be financially successful. In 2003, the Board of Supervisors reviewed conceptual plans prepared by PAC and, and, the RS, and the RSG independent feasibility study and then awarded $11.5 million to finance the purchase of the property from the YMCA and the design and construction of the project. After the project was approved and financed by the Board of Supervisors, two independent studies were conducted, P, B, and A, a marketing research company from Florida was employed by the YMCA to conduct a survey to determine marketability of the project and especially community desires for the new facility. A second survey conducted by Professor Michael Blasey of California State um, Long Beach was commissioned by the city of Newport Beach. The results of both surveys were very similar. The community had a strong desire, and I repeat that, the community had a strong desire to see more swimming aquatic facilities and programs, more facilities and programs for seniors, more facilities for fitness and recreation, more facilities for banquets, cultural Mr. events, and cooking classes, and more facilities Mr. for Gimbora, picnics. How much longer do you have? Uh, it's about another half a page, sir. Okay, well, uh, we have heard about all of those studies already in the earlier presentations, and so that did you have a particular comment on as far as the type of pool use or that, that you would have that you can sum up in about one sentence yeah, well, because one, we remember I we're sure. getting once trying again, to get as many people as possible through. Well, once again, I'm speaking on behalf of Rick Dayton. This is his letter. He couldn't be here well, today. But uh, it's a very compelling letter as I read it, and I'll just read you this one paragraph here. Uh, when, when swim coach Blue was asked why a 50-meter pool was important, at the last PAC meeting, he answered that it was mainly to help young competitive swimmers to become accustomed to competing at a 50-meter length. He mentioned that the younger swimmers who only uh, train in a 25-meter pool uh, would be intimidated when they compete in a 50-meter pool. Both Coach Blue and David Kiff agreed that the most lap swimmers prefer the 25-meter length pool for exercise. Okay, thank you I very much. I think that's the main, main, main thing. I, I think that in future testimony, uh, we have heard about all of the studies and we recognize those we have copies of them up here so you don't need to remind us about that we're interested in getting your feeling on the really the the, uh, the type of pool facility that you'd like to see so come on up good afternoon my name is Tim Stokes um, I have served as a manager of the board on the YMCA I'm currently a PAC member and I actually live in the, the neighborhood the one reason why the reason that um, the PAC exists is because it's a, a what we call a project area and it has impact to the area. What is being, being proposed now is more of an impact to the area be, simply because of traffic and it doesn't keep, keep in time with simply a community center. So I have objections to an, another program implement with this YMCA. We already have conceded with the indoor 
basketball court for the program and that thing for the benefit of the city. So that's my comment. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is George Robertson, and I'm a longtime resident of Santa Ana Heights. My family were one of the original um, purchasers in 1962 in West Santa Ana Heights. I purchased my home in that same area in 1988. Um, I grew up in this area. I swam at the Y. I swam and played water polo at Newport Harbor High School. I played water polo at uh, uh, UCI. I was a uh, lifeguard here for the city of Newport Beach for over 12 years. I understand the importance of aquatics. I now have my kids in the aquatics, and I understand the, um, the impacts to, uh, uh, to trying to find pool times. And if you go for a smaller pool, what happens is that you end up taking from Paul to pay Peter. You already heard before about the impact trying to get things scheduled. If you go with a 50-meter pool, you'd be able to have recreational swimming, swim lessons, and swim team all at the same time. And then that would uh, talk about quality of life. I mean, when my kids are swimming in, in swim teams, I could do my recreational swimming at the same time. I'd be able to spend a lot more time with my kids. Right now, you know, the kids have swimming. We get them home, get them fed, and then I go off and I do my recreational swimming at night. Okay. Um, so uh, it, you know, talk about the quality of life. Talk about the impact in the community. I think it's much better. The little kitty um, uh, splash, splash area. If you're going to give us something, give that up. I mean, I'm a parent. I understand what little kids need, but you know what? That's not going to be a draw. If you want uh, this to be a community draw, put in the 50-meter pool. That's going to be much more benefit than anything else that we have out there. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Mary Sloak. I'm a longtime member of the PAC, probably over 12 years. We um, started on this project for, for the sake of the community. We felt that the three pools was a better fit for the community. It's a smaller area. We can put three uses in there. If you put in the 50-meter pool and you make it a multi-use pool, it becomes a no-use pool. You cannot regulate the temperature of a 50-meter pool. I don't care what kind of jets you put in there. The recreational people are going to say it's too, too cold for them to swim in, and you're going to cut out the seniors unless you build a separate pool for them. We studied this, this project for the last three or four years, and the, the community has, has had its input, and we have listened to them, and that's why we came up with that, with that cost. Um, if you put in the 50-meter pool and this cost escalates, I don't think the PAC is going to support it. And if the PAC doesn't support it, the Board of Supervisors are, aren't going to support it. So you might be building this on your own. Thank you. Good afternoon, or I guess it's almost dinner time. Uh, I'm Beverly Holtz, and I have been going to the Y for 11 years. And I use the deep water pool. And I agree with the PAC members. The facility is too small to handle what you're talking about putting in there. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to pay for a 50-meter pool. And I, I do want to say, I really feel bad. Please that talk to us. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really feel bad about the parents whose children really need a 50-meter pool. Go for it. You spend money for all these conferences and, and for help with this and that and the other thing. Spend for getting a proper facility for a 50-meter pool so that they'll have some place to go. And leave us poor seniors alone. Let us be there. The, the dress, dressing rooms are so small. The room you have for dressing rooms is inadequate right now. And as far as the timing for the six lanes, you can regulate your time so that the master swimmers can go at a different time than the lap poolers. You don't have to all go at the same time. We have as many, oh, I'm so dry. We have as many as 18 to 20 women Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when I go into the deep water pool. It's even too crowded for that. But we get along, and we manage to do all of our exercises. And believe me, I'll miss it. it and, uh, that's what, and I won't go when it's that large, even if it's <coughs> did, which it doesn't appear to be able to, to do. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Shirley Feller. I've been swimming laps for 25 years. I'm interested in just the lap pool. 25 yards is fine for me. But my neighbor called and said, now, I can't be there. Can you go down and talk for me and say I'm in the, I'm older than you and I'm in the, the warm water pool, the deep pool? And she said, the old people really need it. So would you tell them that the, that the older people 
really need the deep water pool. And if we can't do it with the 50 and have that too, it'd be better to have the 25 and have it also. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's get down the question. I, I'll have to admit I have been lobbied by several of my generation for that, keeping that pool around. Hi, my name is Susan Stark. I'm a resident of Newport Beach, and my daughter's in the swim team at the YMCA. And um, uh, what we care about is just more water. We want to be able to work with everybody, be with everybody, have everybody there and everybody be happy. So if we could do a 50-meter that provides for recreation, lap swimming, and the swim team, that would be wonderful. We just want to move and work with everybody so everyone's happy. We're not trying to push anyone out, but we certainly do need more water space. Thank you. Mayor, Council, uh, my name is Brett Clement. I live in Santa Ana Heights, and um, I, I don't think everybody on, in the Santa, Heights, Santa Ana Heights area has been truly approached about this whole issue because I certainly wasn't, um, and I didn't really know about it until the last two weeks. Uh, my kids are members of the YMCA. I'm a member of the YMCA. Uh, I was a member of the YMCA back in 1972 as a child, uh, swimming there, um, getting swim lessons and learning how to swim. Uh, I think what's being conveyed to you guys right now is that we need a competition pool. We don't. Um, my kids aren't on the swim team. My kids go there to swim. I need a swim, swimming pool too because I can no longer run. Um, hurt knees and, and all the, you know, the whole thing. Um, another thing that we could have done over the last three years is we could have created a fund through the YMCA to help facilitate the cost of a pool there at, at the YMCA facility. Um, it never really came up as, as, a, as an issue or an idea to do so. And so I've already put in motion to create a fund to help with the, the cost of the pool. And um, we're working on that right now. Um, we're building a larger facility right now. Um, with that facility, uh, they plan on bringing in more membership. With more membership, there is no way we are going to be able to faci facilitate all those people in a pool and make time for everybody. Um, there's just no way. It's a small, tiny pool. I can't even go in there and swim myself as, as an adult uh, member. Um, my kids can't go in and swim because there's no time. Um, and the time that they can, uh, other, other user groups are using it. Thank you. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tom Edson. I am uh, um, the former aquatics coordinator for the city of Costa Mesa, the former aquatics supervisor for the city of Laguna Beach, and I spent uh, a good 10 years of my life programming aquatic facilities in local municipalities. Um, I have a sense that, and I'm sure you do as a result of your studies, that there is an increasing demand, variable demand, for more and more aquatic space in the city. One of the things we might want to consider is not necessarily focusing on one project. In fact, what we might want to do is look at the possibility of utilizing the space at Newport Harbor and Corona del Mar much more effectively. My evaluation of the present pool use time available at Newport Harbor and Corona del Mar is I would give it an F in terms of grade. Our recreation department has done a fair job. We do have uh, a joint use agreement with these facilities and the school district, but it needs to be explored. Rather than concentrate our focus on this small box located at Santa Ana Heights, let's look at the possibility of spreading our interests across three pools rather than two. I will give you an adviso, which is the following. It's very difficult to bring some of these user groups into compatible use. The central problem, as the seniors have made clear to you, is heating a pool to a convenient temperature that makes it possible for them to exercise. The demography of the situation is we're going to have more and more and more seniors, and it's important to accommodate that group. Increasingly, we have a group of swimmers who want to swim, who negotiate. You asked previously, how many master swimmers are there in Newport Beach? There are untold hundreds because many of us are going to pools outside of the area. Um, let's look at the possibility of renegotiating our open hour swim policy with the school district. You might want to take a look at the arrangement the city of Laguna Beach has with 
the high school there, which is a multi-use facility. It's open for swimming 10 hours a day. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I appreciate uh, your suggestion, and I wanted to let you know that I, you know, that those same thoughts had crossed my mind, and I went over to the Bergeson pool, and they're packed in over there like yes. sardines. So for us to demand more time at the Bergeson pool and at Newport Harbor pool, you know, that would mean that existing groups would get less time. So I, I think putting pressure on those facilities, you know, we would be kind of pitting people against each other, and um, I don't want to do that. Not necessarily. What we have at Bergeson Pool is a very short time period in which we're jamming together quite a few groups, yes, so it is very tight. However, we have no master's access, no swimming access to the pool, both pools, when they are virtually empty. From 9 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, those pools are empty. From 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Saturday and Sunday, again, unless there's a scheduled conference, water polo or swimming, those pools, again, are sit empty. And I think it would be responsible of us to at least appraise the possibility that we might be able to move some programming around and accommodate some of the more strenuous interests in Santa Ana Heights. Thank you. My name is Arlene Modis, and I've lived in the Newport Mesa area since 1944. So I'm well acquainted with the uh, YMCA. I've been taking my children there for all kinds of things, especially the swimming. I am now uh, using the uh, deep water pool for therapy for myself. I would not be able to walk at all if it hadn't been for that pool. Um, the one thing I need to say that about not getting rid of it, of course, but also to add, uh, make it wheelchair accessible where there be more people be able to get down to the pool. There is no, if you can't walk, you can't get down to the pool. And so I thought that uh, I'd stick my two cents in about that, the wheelchair people, so there'd be more use, be more people coming to the Y for that purpose. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mike Smith. I live up in Santa Ana Heights. Um, we have been members of the YMCA. We've also uh, been involved in the Junior Guard uh, swim program there. Um, I support the 25 by 25 pool along with the children's play area and the deep water therapy pool. I also would support the 25 by 35 pool. Um, I am becoming concerned about the cost and, and how much uh, monies the county and PAC and everybody is, is essentially putting into it. So. Um, I would like to see it go forward, but I do think there needs to be an evaluation of the cost. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. My name is Dolores Odding. I live in Newport Beach. I'm a little bit disappointed that there is not um, any information for the public um, at this meeting, that we had a slide presentation and you all had hard copy. I'm also disappointed that you didn't start the meeting at 3.30 to allow more people in the audience to attend, but I do applaud you for extending the time that you did to us. I've been attending PAC meetings and since probably 2003, and I've been familiar with the planning of the community center. I also have been attending city council meeting, unlike some of the people here, since probably, how long, Don, would you say, Mayor Don? A long time. I'm not going to say too long. Okay. All right, because you don't want to say how old I am. Anyway, <laughs> um, I remember the evening when Mr. Slaughter came, and it was about the Marion Burgess and Pula Corona Del Mar, and I think he's the same gentleman, it could be, that came here and and he blew the whistle. And so um, I honestly feel that we're trying to squeeze uh, 20 pounds of concrete into a five pound bag. I have learned from Council Member Selich that if you have the money, you can build it. My concern here is that this is a community center and this is what it's supposed to be. And it's supposed to service the needs of the seniors. And um, I also feel that we do need a full-blown aquatic center in this city, or that is a demand that's being heard. I, I went to the outreach meetings at the PAC. I met the people. I went to the meet and greets and all the rest of it. Nobody was clamoring or shouting or screaming for a 50-meter pool. That's something that's new. And if that's something that our community does need, then we need to look at servicing the needs of our community. I've been attending the, um, the finance facility meeting, so have you, Mr. Mayor and Council Member Curry. 
And one of the things that you've been doing is a master plan of how we're going to spend our certificates of participation. So one of the things we need to ask to that, add to that master plan is perhaps, since you're involved in these fairs committee, is I know that you want to take the top of Coyote Canyon landfill. And Councilmember Curry, I know Coyote Canyon like the back of my hand. I have slides and video of, of the closure of Coyote Canyon. Um, I want I, I want to finish, please. Thank you. Um, since uh, since I'll talk fast. Since you want to build uh, a golf course up there, like I don't already, and um, you know, like a golf course with a community um, with a clubhouse. Okay. I really think that you need to look at that facility, and I think that facility might service the needs of a full-blown aquatic center with the parking and the spectator events, and really a first-class. Uh, world-renowned center. Trying to squeeze these 20 pounds of concrete into a three-pound bag just isn't going to cut it for what the needs of our community are today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to uh, speak on this particular issue? Council members, my name is Rhonda Borth. I am a lifelong resident of the city of Costa Mesa, and I have three children, including myself, all members of the Y, using the aquatics facility. Um, personally, my children, this is their form of exercise. It's not just a competitive sport. It is where my daughter gets her workout. She's not as concerned about the competitiveness as she is about the exercise. If we had more surface space, for more people to be able to work out, play in the pool, swim in the pool, everyone, not just the seniors, not just the kids, but to accommodate more people, then more people would reap the benefits of swimming as an exercise. That's okay. my support Thank 50 you. meter pool. Thank you. All right, it looks like that we've, we've wound down a little bit. Uh, at a study session, we are not, uh, we do not make determinations or vote on which direction to go. What we do is give the staff direction as to uh, what to bring back to the City Council at a regular meeting for us to make a decision. So I will open this up to the Council now to see what your thoughts are on this. Uh, Council Member Daigle. Uh, first, I'd like to thank my colleagues in the Council for the patience to hear the public. I know they've come a long way and that um, for some of you, it's, it's not often that you're in the political window, so certainly this issue uh, has touched your lives. Uh, I think it's a very good information uh, sharing uh, forum. I want to thank the staff and our experts and our architect for their input. Uh, one uh, suggestion on approach is we do have a city council um, committee that's been looking at the agreement and, and aspects of the agreement. Um, perhaps if we could meet further with staff, discuss some of these issues and then come back to council with a recommendation. Anybody else in the council have a thought or concept on that? Okay, so that the Santa Ana Heights Redevelopment uh, Committee, uh, Community Center Committee will look at this and come back with some sort of recommendation to the council on which direction we go from here? The City Council Committee. The City Council Committee, that's what I mean. Yes. All right, then thank you very much all of you for coming. Uh, I, I know as far as I'm concerned, I am very concerned about recreational uses within the pool. I feel that uh, it, uh, the direction that I'm going is that, that I don't think that we want to put together a meat pool out there. I think that uh, I want to uh, make sure that the seniors are adequately taken care of. And I would like to have some place for my grandson to come and learn to swim. So I'd like to have the youthful, very young spaces within a swimming pool. Uh, it does sound like to me, because of all the the number of people that are trying to use this pool, that that the square feet of water may need to be a little bit more than the 25 by 25. Now, I don't uh, have any idea where we go from that, but uh, it sounds like to me that uh, there's a demand out there, but uh, that's at least the direction in which I'm going. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will now adjourn to closed session.